What? Our queue is being shot! Huh? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean, so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner, which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed, but we refuse to settle on that thought, and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey and wish us luck! Hmm. The first part of our keel is being prepared to be worked on. It is the forward part of our keel, which is the smaller one. The big one is still down there. All that's being done right now, it's being planed and sanded, so it's nice and straight to start working on. These little stands have been built just for the keel. I don't know if they'll stay here or if they're just for this work. I'm sure they can be used for many other reasons, but for now, let's see how this goes. So over there, they have finished sanding and planing the smallest part of our keel. Now they've still got to start on the biggest part of our keel. But the thing is, lengthwise everything is fine. But the big part of our keel is actually two parts of our keel. So we have to cut it in half lengthways, which gives us 26 centimeters on each side. However, when it's cut, it won't be exactly 26. So we're going to narrow down both of those halves to 25 centimeters. The other part, the shortest part of the keel is 27 centimeters. But to keep everything the same, everything is going to be cut and planed down to 25. So we have three pieces which will be joined together to make one long keel. So the way they measured this halfway. They measured halfway on each side of the keel, pulled the string all the way through the middle. They made some reference points a few meters, every few meters through this keel, and that's how they know how they'll cut it in half. It's another very hot Brazilian day. We're all a bit in the shade, including this guy here. What's happening now? Uh, we cut the keel with a circular saw. I could only reach halfway down the keel, so now we flipped it so we can cut the other side and the two cuts will meet halfway and split the keel in two. But if you have a look, they're actually measuring the other side as well, where the halfway line is, so they can cut in the same place as the cut underneath happened. 
Eu vou nessa a paz. So the keel has been flipped around. As you can see in the bottom half, the cut's been made more than halfway through. Now the line has been drawn in the top half, very shallowly, just so the line can be made. And then he's gonna go over again to cut it deeper and deeper. And then he goes three times until the top cut meets the bottom. So hopefully this explains it a little bit better. This is now being cut in two pieces. One and two. These are the long ones and this is the short one. The short one has already been planed and sanded. Well, both of the long ones have to be smoothened now to be ready to be cut and joined together. So the kill had this piece cut off and we didn't have these planks but we still had the planks on the other side. Now that those planks are also gone it's completely free. I can come inside and check the ribs very truly and job by looking at this board. Ah. The outside. So this is what the fish can see and now this is the inside. It smells so bad. So you can see that the ship worms really built a maze. How amazing. little friends but they're actually our enemies I don't know if they've been introduced to you yet so you see these shells they have an animal inside and they come and eat our wood as well you see the big holes they make as big as the shells So the two pieces of kill finally became three pieces of kill. The big one was half and now we have the three pieces getting almost ready. Lelo is helping by sanding and doing the finish, finishing touches and yeah this is our kill now. I'm in love. 
with a new view. Another day in paradise. So today, <laughs> as you can see in the back, they're busy layering a keel or putting it alongside each other so it's ready to be joined together. One joint has already been made and they're gonna make the others so they can fit it under our boat in the next few days. This is a very millimetrical job and here everything is made very uh, handcrafted. It's a very artisanal way of making things so it's really cool to see and we're gonna share it with you a bit. So this piece has been cut already. There the drawings have been done so these pieces are eventually going to be joined together. That's what they're busy doing right now. So the cuts have been made on the other side of this board of the keel been flipped over because the saw would only reach half the way. So here, just to be sure, this means stay and this means go. <laughs> it's like when you're operating an eye, which eye is the right eye to operate on? <laughs> So with the saw, the electric saw, the cut has been made clean through all the way as it's circular. It didn't manage to get into this corner, so back to the hand tools to finish the job. Aqui no Brasil os dois melhores estão aqui, ó. E no Brasil aqui. Os dois melhorzinhos estão aqui. É bom, é claro. <risos> There's only one more cut to do before this joint is ready. That is this one. joint of one of our long pieces of keel ready to be attached to the, the short piece of keel so what from my understanding this will be most front let's see we'll move this is the middle piece of the keel the middle part and then this will be the back yes you confirm <laughs> I think 
Ja, 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 so these two pieces have now been joined together. Nothing's been bolted, glued, or fixed permanently yet. This will be something like 10 meters, 10, 11 meters. There is still that big piece behind that hasn't been cut to join yet. So that is the front of the boat. This would be somewhere more towards the back. And when that last piece has been added, that will make the last piece of the keel. The keel has almost all, almost all been removed. Yesterday when we left, you guys saw this part of the keel was still attached. This has now been removed and a little support has been added just in case to hold this part up. All that remains is one piece over there and a big piece over there. I, I cannot wait for all this rot to be off the boat. So if you look at the total of the boat, most of the rot would have come from the keel or most of the holes and from here onwards, we can start focusing more and more on plank per plank, removing it, checking it, reusing it, re replacing it, fixing it. But having this keel done is going to be a great step forward. I cannot wait. So this has now been clamped together. So they can see how much of each side still needs to be sanded or just filed away for it to fit nicely. So it has to be a tight fit like this so they can see how much needs to be sanded on each of the ends. As it's down to millimeters now we need to be connecting that piece with that piece which is not much so we're gonna pass the saw through this a few times until the joinery fits nicely The whole keel's been removed, except for one last piece in the back. Can you see it? The only survivor. We're almost there. I'm really happy. <laughs> The new queue is getting cut for the joints so the three pieces can go together. So we have Beto and Elio working on this joinery. So what's happening is there is probably three or two millimeters of space left here. So little bit by little bit they're taking off millimeter by millimeter on the other side to allow this to slowly get smaller until the whole joint has been is wood on wood and there's no air in between it's not looking easy at all yeah. 
E aí, tá difícil? Tá fácil, não tá difícil não, tá fácil. É? é? Tá quase? Tá quase, né? Eu tô até emocionada. Isso aqui são os acabamentos, né? Tem que ficar uhum. serroteando pra ele encostar bem, né? Ficar bem coladinho. Muito show. This is a very precise moment for the queue and they are really really putting effort on making the joints come together perfectly. It's really really cool to watch. Since we bought the boat, I heard a lot about the concept of wooden boats having a soul, being alive. Because as long as the wood's not rotten, it is still alive. And as it comes from nature and you can still see the trees, it has like this special life around a wooden boat. So they told us to talk to our boat and feel our boat and really try to connect to our boat which is a really nice concept that we really like but besides that what I can see now is all the attention and care that's put when the boat's being made because it is wood and this way of making it is so like it depends so much on hands and eyes people are looking at the detail they are touching the detail and so much feeling I'm really feeling emotional about this because it's not just the wood, but also the people involved that make our boat gain life, and that's really, really special. Besides all that, the carpenter working on our boat learned everything he knows with his father, who learned with his father, who came on a 12 meters boat, I don't know how many years ago, from Portugal to Brazil, on board of that small boat made out of wood, so it's really special all the heritage experience and culture involved in this process. The last piece of queue is being cut right now. <laughs> Now that we finished removing the old queue, magic is happening on both sides. So the place where the old queue was, now it's building the new frame to receive the queue. So construction. And here we're still building the joints of the new queue. So also just magic, magic, magic. No more breaking for today. So for those who think that our queue was worth nothing, we still can use it for something. Now the old queue is working as a support for us to build our new queue, which is awesome. Because actually, if you take a look, the wood itself is not rotten. The problem is that it's been eaten and the queue started getting shorter, so we needed to replace it, but the quality of the wood is still good. So that's why we are using it to hold our boat for now. The problem of using the old kill as a support for the new kill is that we were planning on putting the old kill all here and now we can't because it's been used. Yeah, you build a little, little temporary roof for the kill. This is what I meant when I, if you ever heard me saying gambiaha, it's like a temporary fix that isn't made to last. So we'll see if this lasts and if it'll do the job. I guess that little roof is working. We've been under it for a while and they're still dry. So, except for these screws arriving for our keel to be attached to our boat, they are also spending all day working on our keel now the big work so the sanding the planing the cutting is all easy now the hard bits the joinery because when you want to join two pieces of keel together you're not allowed any spaces in between so so far that's working but what they're doing now 
is they've cut like half a block in each part of the keel to be joined so they can hammer a peg through that will tighten it all so if you have a look here this isn't just any sized wood hit through the keel this is like they spent so long making this so here they've cut this to a perfect shape so this can get hammered through and it pulls this part of the keel that way and the other part the other way so they're still busy cutting it finely sanding it so there is no open space I find it very very impressive who's that? So we're going to say hi. Is it cold? So we hope you enjoyed this. It was a very productive episode. A lot happened, but there's still a lot more to happen. True. Rome was not built in a day and neither did our kill. So I think it was built in three days. No, fifteen days. Anyway, <laughs> except for that, we've had to stop the episode now because we've got we couldn't fit it all in, but we will continue in the next episode and we'll start adding some more extra things. But maybe we'll see. We hope you're finding this interesting as much as we do because we find it very fascinating. Yeah. So stay tuned for the next time because there'll be a lot more about this keel and we'll start working on the rest of the boat. So we would like to just finish by saying thanks to the patrons and our new patrons for joining and having faith in us yeah. your help is helping us out loads and also the patron pal donations thank you so much thank you thank you thank you <laughs> mp forgot the k on the thank anyway it's there now so thank you so much for supporting us. Natalia and Wesley. Billy. Shashi. Devin Bryan from SB Tuju. Frederick. Jedminas. Aqua Life. William. James. Thomas. Called up. Paul Jeff Charles Brian George Robert Peja Zinho That's for you next time, that's not my job <laughs>